So my next uh, activity is going to be using everyone's favorite, which is liquid nitrogen. Let the genie out of the bottle. You know you're in San Francisco when they applaud liquid, liquid nitrogen. nitrogen. <laughs> right, the most basic thing to do with liquid nitrogen, you know, we'll start with some of the classics. We'll do that one. We'll do this one. Quiche hates the flour. Just thought I should tell you that. Because it makes such a mess. No, some of us have had a rough year with love. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the reason why it destroys it is that the, cold, the liquid nitrogen is minus 200 Celsius. Um, it freezes the water inside the flour. That causes the flour to become very uh, brittle because, water, because ice is quite brittle. Um, Liquid nitrogen is pretty dangerous to so touch it with your hands. You wouldn't want to do that. It's really cold. But it's actually not as dangerous to touch as you'd expect. Because compared to liquid nitrogen, I'm a furnace. <laughs> actually, compared to lots of things, I'm a furnace. <laughs> no. um, but the uh, liquid nitrogen, of course, is... Uh, I'm, uh, I'm 230 degrees Celsius hotter than liquid nitrogen. I'm as much hotter than liquid nitrogen is than your oven is hotter than the food you cook. So the liquid nitrogen, when it touches my hand, boils instantaneously because it's so, and it, that pushes away all the remaining liquid nitrogen. It's called the Leiden frost effect. So it gets shoved away from me. And so that keeps my hand safe as long as I don't keep my hand there long enough for it to start cooling down so I'm no longer a furnace compared to the liquid nitrogen. If I were to keep my hand submerged in it for a while, that would be unfortunate. <laughs> Luckily, that's a mistake you're not terribly likely to make. You go, wow, that's cold. <laughs> um, but another interesting sort of thing about this is that liquid nitrogen um, freezes, uh, makes rubber do really kind of odd things. So here's a normal tennis ball. I'm actually not immediately clear why I feel the requ requirement to actually show you how a normal tennis ball behaves first. <laughs> like you all don't know. A tennis ball, it balances. Who would have thought? Anyway, so this is my liquid nitrogen tennis ball. Right? Not quite as exciting as this one is because what happens is, is that when this ball hits the ground, of course, it gets compressed inwards and then it pops back into place again. Um, the reason why rubber can do this is that rubber is made of, of thousands and thousands of long stranded molecules. Those molecules have some attraction to each other. There are some van der Waal forces, so it sort of holds its shape. But as you pull, you can overcome those van der Waals forces so they can slide past each other. When the material gets colder, those van der Waals forces become stronger because they, as things get cold, their motion becomes less and less. So proportionally, the van der Waals forces become stronger so that those materials become more, the bonds between them become stronger and stronger effectively, and so they can no longer stretch. So they become increasingly hard instead of being stretchy. Um, what's exciting, of course, is that eventually that will revert back to the way it was before. Um, and that reminds me of my next activity. I do need a volunteer for this activity. Oh, let's find one. Oh, wait, I'll let Keith do it. He's, he's, he's the one with the microphone. Oh, that, that young lady has had her hand higher, and people are still shooting mini marshmallows at me. This, this young woman here is ready to come up, and, um, and what's going to happen to her before you agree? I, I need her to be artistic for a moment, if she oh, doesn't mind. She just agreed right beforehand. Maybe you should try the furnace line. <laughs> so if you'll come on name? up for a moment. Diana. Diana, let's give Diana a hand. So, so if I ask uh, Diana, yeah, so why don't you come back over here. So if I ask Diana to pound, well, I, first I just want to show her something. So this is a piece of sticky tack that has been nailed into this piece of wall board. You know, this blue tack stuff, you know, the stuff you use to hold up posters before you have money. <laughs> we still use it at school, don't laugh at me. <laughs> So we pounded this one through the board. If I give you this sticky tack and a hammer, do you think you're, you're up for the challenge? Here's a hammer. Okay. You want me to try? Yeah. Can you put your hand right here? Yeah, I'll hold it. Hold it. This one? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not the Yeah, so I mean, you know, she, she knows that, uh, thanks for trying to hit my hand, I appreciate it. <laughs> you sure you're not a high school student? Anyway, so what we're gonna actually, I wanted to actually, make, the problem of course is it was the wrong shape, so you make that into a nail shape for me? Uh, a little bit pointier than that. There you go, perfect. So, all right. So now we'll put this into the liquid nitrogen and we'll be patient. Oops. We have to be a little bit more patient than that. So, if you'll have a seat for just a moment, we'll work on something else while we're waiting for that. Be exciting. You, uh, I trust you with the hammer. <laughs> That's always just fun. There's nothing that goes with that. I just like doing it. <laughs> no, um, so it, this, is a, uh, this is a light bulb here. And um, I'm going to plug it in. We'll see which way is on. Ah, that's on. Okay, so that light bulb is now on. And now I'm going to switch the light bulb off. You remember off. The light bulb is now off. Okay. And now I'm going to uh, uh, break the glass off the light bulb. I'm going to put on safety goggles. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That bounce, that was weird. <laughs> but I kept the filament intact, and that was the goal. Now, light bulb on. Oh, good. So if I were to plug in the light bulb, nothing bad would happen, yeah? <laughs> if I plug in the light bulb and then turn it on, what will happen to the filament? It'll burn out. A lot of people think that the glass around the light bulb, the purpose of the glass is to keep the filament so that you won't touch the hot filament. But you know what? Bulbs were invented before people had lawsuits. Edison didn't put the glass to keep you safe. He kept it there because tungsten, when it is white hot, will burn in air. Okay? And so the inside of the glass is nitrogen, no oxygen, so it can't burn. Inside of this container of liquid nitrogen, inside the liquid in there, there's also no oxygen. Now, is it uh, the thing's off, right? So I'm going, to turn, I'm going to turn it on. And if I plugged it in now, that would be bad, right? <laughs> now, why doesn't it burn out? There's no oxygen inside the liquid nitrogen. There is, however, the problem of bashing the film. And, um, oh, did you see just flash for a second? Yeah. Why did it flash when I brought it up into the air for just a second? It got some oxygen and started to burn. That's oh, also, the filament's kind of, oh, there we go. But if I bring it into the air, it will burn out as the oxygen all gets used up. Cool, huh? Uh, you can't do this in oil. You might think, well, I'll just do this in oil, but the oil sticks to the filament.